Hey guys, welcome to Ali and Coco's Science Show. Today, we are actually going on a hike and we are looking for a parasite. <gasps> hmm. And not just any parasite, because it's the holiday season, we are looking for mistletoe. Yeah, mistletoe is, in fact, what people call a hemi-parasite, kind of like a half-parasite. I did find some way up in this tree, so give me like two minutes, I'll go grab it for you guys. Let me put you down right here. Okay, one second. So I guess Colette really wants to eat this. Uh, I found some mistletoe that wasn't way high up in the tree. Here it is on a little branch. Now if you look, you can kind of see right here that it has buried its kind of root structure, its stems, into the bark of this elm tree. The mistletoe that's in North America is in the genus Phorodendron. And <laughs> there are mistletoe on all the other warmer continents, so not Antarctica. Uh, they've all evolved to have similar traits, but they are not related. They're in different families. So uh, that is called convergent evolution. They've evolved separately, but somehow they've achieved the similar traits. It worked. It worked in their, in their ecosystem. So uh, a lot of the mistletoe have, there are no berries on it right now, but a lot of them have sticky berries, and it's kind of cool. The, they use that to allow birds to move from host and mistletoe to the next tree, and they want to get those sticky berries off their beak. So let's say a bird ate some mistletoe berries, and it flew all the way over here, and wiped its beak off on this plant. Well then, that mistletoe would be able to start growing on another host, so it gets to move around even though Plants don't get to move around. They've kind of evolved these cool ways. So that's how mistletoe kind of moves from plant to plant. But why on earth would we kiss under a parasite? You know, Christmas traditions seems kind of strange. There are a couple different reasons. So I mentioned that the birds can eat the berries. Guys, I would not, I would not eat the mistletoe because if you eat too much of it, it does have toxic properties. So even if you touch it, make sure you, if you touch the berries, make sure you wash your hands afterward. But the mistletoe uh, in Greek, in ancient Greece, was used as kind of like a cure-all, like a medicine. So it helped with infertility, it helped with headaches and nausea and uh, menstrual cramps. But there are other reasons why we kiss under it, so maybe not just to show that we appreciate its medicinal properties. Now, the tradition of kissing under it started in the 18th century in, I believe, old school England. And back then, if a woman was caught underneath it, a man was allowed to steal a kiss, those swanker devils, which I think is completely unfair. If you refuse a kiss, you get bad luck. But I know, right? Totally not cool. Why should a woman have to, to have to kiss a man? That's silly. Other traditions, they'd have all the berries on the mistletoe, and you would pluck a berry every time you, someone kissed on the mistletoe, and when you're out of berries, you had to throw it out or else it'd be bad luck. Those are kind of the major sources of that tradition. Just to kind of last minute recap, we have learned today that mistletoe is in fact a hemiparasite and it has toxic properties that in the ancient times was used as a medicine and some old traditions, they thought that it was bad luck to not kiss under the mistletoe. So um, you can do what you want, but I'm gonna kiss my dog. Bye guys, we hope you have an extraordinary day. Thanks. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry, I was about to start filming and I, I found a bone. It looks like a femur, so uh, you're just sitting right here by me. That's really exciting, so cool. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> just hiking. Hey, what are you 
doing? What you got in your paw? You okay? I don't know if she's okay. Ah, uh, uh, no.